How's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here and welcome to another review of the Boruto anime. We're going to be covering episode 188 in today's review. In this episode, we finally get to see Kawaki. We saw him in last week's episode, but we finally get to see Boruto and Kawaki interacting in the anime after, well, the first episode, which was years later, but this is their first interaction being portrayed in the anime. So, how was the episode overall? Well, before I get on to the episode review, if you're new to the channel, you like this type of content, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Anyways, let's get on to that review, shall we? We start the episode off with an anime original scene, which is presumably about five or six years prior to what's going on right now. We see a young Kawaki walking through the car hideout. It looks like he's been pretty much beat up and worn out, so he's trying to escape, but he's confronted by Garo. Now, Garo over here is an outer member of Kara, and, uh... This guy it doesn't seem like he has his arms. He looks like he's got a basically pincer-like arms. But it turns out it looks like he was experimented on as well. But look at what he's got now. It's thanks to Kara that he's actually stronger as a result of the experimentations on him. Kawaki, on the other hand, wants nothing to do with Kara. And it's interesting that Kawaki actually doesn't know what Kara's name is. And yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting there. But anyways, um, Garo wants Kawaki to come with him, but Kawaki refuses, so Garo over here basically grabs him with his pincer arms and starts choking him, which uh, Kawaki over here ends up using an attack from his karma seal and blasts Garo's chin straight off. Now, Amado and Kashin Koji were watching this, and I think Kashin Koji was about to jump in and stop Garo, but Amado stops him and tells him to observe what's going on. And at the end of it, Amado, after seeing this, is like, wow, the world will know the name Kara. <laughs> Interesting. Now we move on to a scene that's from the manga, in which Delta and Jigen are at, sitting at a table. Jigen's eating his dinner, and Delta over here is impatient and complaining about why is it taking Koji so long to retrieve the vessel. And Jigen tries to explain to Delta that maybe something caught his interest. That's why he's uh, taking his time. He's very unpredictable. And this annoys Delta, who completely destroys the table. But Jigen over here, he just simply recreates the table and the food and the wine that he was drinking. Just very casually, I must add. But anyways, um, Jigen actually gives Delta permission to go out on the mission to basically accompany Koji and see what's going on. But, he ha but she has to take Koji's lead and not take any drastic measures on her own. So she complies and she takes off. And Amado over here is like, are you sure that's a good idea? But Jigen ensures him that, no, everything's going to be fine, but yeah. Don't tell everyone to bother me at the moment, so I'm just going to go out and be on my own now. So, yeah, I don't want anyone bothering me, so make sure all the other inners are uh, not bothering me for the time being. Now back to anime original stuff. It looks like Delta's going through this town. I'm not really sure where she's at, but there's a bunch of dead people who are just beating up people. It turns out she runs into Garo over here and recruits Garo to come with her to retrieve the vessel in the Land of Fire. And Garo over here, yeah. It sounds like he's uh, talking through a mask here because, well, he did kind of lose his chin back in the day, so I'm guessing he probably needs like a Bane-like mask, so anyways, um, she recruits him. Anyways, to Boruto and the others, so they're observing Kawaki, and that's when they notice that on his uh, left palm, yeah, he has a karma seal, which is the same seal, or same thing that Borto has on his hand as well. And as they're observing on Borto's right palm where his, or his karma seal is at, yeah, it starts to ache. And Kwaki, at the same time, his uh, karma seal actually starts to ache as well. So interesting. Now we get another flashback scene here. Now this was slightly different in the manga compared to the anime. So here... Kawaki is simply being sold, and his father doesn't seem to really care that much, but we don't get to hear his dialogue, but anyways, um, Jigen over here approaches Kawaki and basically tells him that, from now on, I'm your father, Kawaki, now come with me. Now in the manga, yeah, Kawaki's father was a drunken, abusive, abusive father. Like literally, this guy just drank, and he just beat Kawaki up, and we don't even know anything about Kawaki's mother. But he literally sells Kawaki for more booze in the manga, so... Yeah, I'm kind of glad that this guy didn't talk, because uh, I kind of want to punch him in his face for what he's done. Like, how could you do that to your own child? Seriously. But anyways, uh, Kawaki wakes up here, and he's not too pleased, and tells everybody, don't touch me. And they all have to get away, because this kid just blows up here. And, um, 
when he calms down, they try to question him. At least Konohamaru tries to question him. Kawaki ain't having any of it. Because he doesn't want to go with them by force. Obviously, he has no idea who they are. He says that, They say they're from the Leaf Village, but he thinks they're car trackers. But then Borto shows up and tries to calm down the situation. And that's when Kawaki over here notices that uh, Borto has a karma seal. And begins to freak out. Delta also arrives on the scene. And uh, she's wondering what's going on. And Koji basically tells her to watch and observe. And that's when she sees that Boruto has a karma seal. And she's even freaking out over here. Like, what the heck is going on? How in the world does this kid have a karma seal too? What's going on, Koji? And uh, Koji over here is like, we need to just sit back and watch what's going on. And as it turns out, it basically Koji lets uh, Delta know that uh, Ao is dead. But Delta over here brought Garo with her. So he'll be able to deal with the situation. And Kawaki is having absolutely nothing of it at this point. He does he didn't trust them before, but he absolutely doesn't trust them now. He's convinced that Borto and the others are car trackers. Because why else would uh Borto have a, a karma seal of his own? So it's pretty clear to Kawaki that Borto and the others are part of Kara. And that's when Garo over here, aka Bane, shows up and starts blasting at Kawaki and basically tells him, Yeah, I'm capturing you, I'm taking you with me, and you know what? If we're successful and I go back with you. I'll be promoted to being an inner. So yeah, you're coming back with me. And Kawaki's like, well, you know what, you bastard? Yeah, you're gonna lose more than your chin this time around. Don't mess with me. So, the episode comes to an end, setting up Kawaki versus Garo. Now I once again have to give kudos to the anime because once again, this I know I've been saying this a lot of these episodes, but I like the fact that the anime is expanding upon the manga. And here, we actually got to see what happened between Kawaki and Garo because in the manga they just basically discussed what happened and told us that yeah they had a previous encounter and Kawaki took out Garo's chin. We actually get to see it in this episode and I thought that was a good decision on the anime's part. I also liked how Delta went to recruit Garo because uh, yeah they didn't show that they didn't show that in the manga either. So again I like the fact that the anime is doing this. That's one of my biggest complaints about the manga is that it feels like it just lacks details. And it's just a snapshot of the story, and it's forcing the anime to tell the rest of the story. But, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just like the fact, again, that the anime is doing a pretty good job expanding upon the manga. I still like the car original scenes, and I like what they did in this episode with it. They basically wrote some of the anime original scenes around the whole Jigen and Delta interaction at the dinner table. So, I thought that was all pretty nice. My favorite parts in this episode are definitely the Kawaki past scenes with Kawaki and Garo's past interaction, and then we have Kawaki meeting Jigen for the first time. I actually really like this a lot, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I like the way that Jigen was drawn here. He was looking very menacing here. Very similar to how it was done in the manga. I think I actually like it a little bit more in the anime this time around. I know a lot of people have been complaining about Jigen's design in the anime, but I think it was spot on here in this episode, at least in this scene in this episode. Alrighty guys, that's pretty much all I got for this episode review. So overall, I thought this was a solid episode. I'm definitely looking forward to next week's episode. I think next week's episode is going to be a big one. So stay tuned for that one. Anyways, I give this episode a 9 out of 10. So guys in the comment section down below, what did you think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all later. You all have a great day or night where you're at. And peace.